Good morning and welcome back to the channel. Today we are super excited to get started with the floor and walls of van number two. So sick. We're Tim and Katie and after saying a bittersweet goodbye to our first build, we are now converting our second Ford Transit. Join us as we transform this empty cargo van into a luxury tiny home on wheels. This week we'll walk you through how we tackle the subfloor. So first things first with the van, before we start with anything, we have to take off all of the paneling on our walls. So let's get started. The factory wall panels in the van are held on by these little plastic clips. So you just use a flathead screwdriver, put it in and twist, and basically pry them out. And then same for the bottom piece. There are some that have a Torx screw head on it. So we'll just get the impact and pop those out. So we're making good progress. I just wanted to show you real quick that we use a 13 millimeter socket for all of the D-ring tie downs. Uh, if you don't have one of those, you just use a little um, impact drill adapter here. Uh, I think it's half inch socket and then 13 mil socket fits perfect on those D-ring bolts. So for our van, we actually ended up using the uh, wheel well covers again. So you really want to preserve these guys. They're just uh, ridged on the back so you don't want to break the top or strip the ridges too much. So I will show you how I try to get them out without damaging them too much. Yeah. Okay. Uh. One of these. Basically you just reef it until it comes out. There we go. I mean, it's not the prettiest, <laughs> but it's usable. That went quick. And now, Katie is responsible for the fine detail work because we keep this and we use it. We normally trim it down a little bit to fit with our floor. I know, but this thing's too fat. Okay, grab another one. The walk of shame. smaller oh there she goes she's still got it oh, it's premature all oh, these are gonna be well maintained Uno, dos. okay now we need the drill we usually bag the screws and the covers and the uh, the strip all together put them somewhere safe they're all done so crazy to see it empty like this it is time to get cracking on the kill mat now that the van is empty. So we'll start on the walls, work our way to the floor. You don't need to go too crazy with the kill mat. About 25% of the surface needs to be covered. Um, so you do not need to keep the sheets whole. We cut them into little strips for the floor and a little bit fatter for the walls. So get them all prepped up now. not have any metal exposed on these unlike the walls and the ceiling where you just do little patches. Hundo P covered. You gotta do it. I'll simply use rolling pins. Personally, I just like a little block of wood. Uh, some of the spots are pretty hard to reach. These little crevices and nooks. So just do a little wood strip. Alright, we finished the kill mat and as you can see we tried to mostly do it on the floor because that's where the most road noise will be as well as the wheel wells and that's the only spot we completely covered and then we kind of went by the 25% rule you know you just cover a little bit on the roof and really the purpose of the kill mat is just to help to ab absorb some of the vibration of the metal panel and now we are heading on to the lights to remove the light itself there's a little clip on the tab on the side you just put the screwdriver in it just pops down. You do the same on the other side. You also need to pop this piece off. Okay. So pop that off and then you just pull this little tab. Now my lights are disconnected and then what I did on the last fan is I just wired, I just duct taped this, sorry, electrical tape around the main wire loom and then we ran the wire loom at the top. So we'll eventually pull out all these clips and push it to the top there and then we can get some slack on it. This 
build, unlike our other one, is um, put these wheel well covers back on now before we install our floor. Last time we went to the effort of putting our floor down first and then tracing and cutting these out. And Basically just like took the bottom. Took the bottom off. off. And we realized, I don't, I don't, we don't think there's any downside to just doing it this way. Um, we get the extra insulation of the wheel well cover. It'll look clean when it's done and we're building around it. And because personally we don't do wheel well boxes like lots of other builders do. Um, we think might as well use the extra insulation we get from the factory wheel well covers. Good morning guys. It's a rainy day in BC here which is great because the fires have been absolutely insane this year. We are going to be working on the flooring of the van today. So that means kind of wood strips, furnace strips to act as a skeleton to hold the one inch XPS foam board insulation in there. So we bought one inch sheet of plywood, one inch thick sheet of plywood to use as our furring strips on the floor, but we remembered that we had some old two by fours remaining from our previous build. So we're gonna strip those down on the table saw to make them one inch thick and use those as our furring strips. So we just have to measure across the van, the width of each board, and then we can get started. Tim. speak we are doing one and eight little lines <laughs> excuse me I have much improved since the first day of <coughs> our old van one and eight little lines so we choose to put one inch boards on top of the ribs so that we can have some airflow under the floor. And so we need to span over these ridges in the van, um, which complicates things just a little bit. But if it's helpful to you, these ridges are 5 16 of an inch high. So this is 1 and 5 16 And so is that at the end, because just our two end pieces will sit on those flat parts so that we can basically have a solid end on each side of our floor. Decided to go with three sections, all 62 inches. Uh, yeah, and then we can just have a large piece of foam here, there, and then one on the edge. Basically, because we'll be taking the lengthwise strips out of the van for pocket holing, we have to make sure that we bring them back into the right spot. So, row A, row B, and row C. So, that is my duty. The Craig Pro Pocket Jig. So basically slide your piece of wood in, clamp it down, and then you have this bit that you adjust the, uh, the stalker to either half inch, three quarter, one inch, or one and a half inch. Lock it in, and then pop it there, and then you've got yourself your pocket holder. And it's so much faster. So last year we were using a jig where you have a clamp clamp it on and then you gotta hold the board and screw or you drill into it. It's just so much faster. Glued and screwed together the entire skeleton structure now. And we are starting to measure and cut the one inch insulation boards. This is Katie's specialty. Okay, let's see. Ah, yeah. Very nice. Foam board is cut size and uh, now we're going to trace or bring the factory mat in here to see how accurate of a template it will be for the plywood that we'll use for our three quarter inch template. And then we'll put that template on the plywood in the shop. So the doorway is a tricky area um, because you have to decide how far into the doorway 
if you're doing a kitchen cabinet layout like us, how far into the doorway is that cabinet going to go? So we decided to go eight inches and we just bring it over far enough so that it covers this lip and gives us some options to work with. Thankfully we're fortunate that we just come over here, come into this fan and yeah, then we just measured from the door here to the edge of the cabinet and we could copy what we did with our stairwell our entryway before. So it's pretty helpful. Indy wants to go in. He likes the band. This tool. Handy little tool. And then boom, you get your measurement. What is it? Well, I just moved it, but it was one and a quarter. Okay. So to summarize the measurements at the door, one and a quarter extra this way. Eight inches longer coming this way. And then two and an eighth coming out. Everything else is basically the same. The other side we overlap just a little bit, basically half an inch, so that we make sure our plywood isn't too big and we want a little bit extra uh, of a gap so that we can put uh, the spray foam in there. And then Katie is doing the difficult, detailed area near the slide. Freshly cut subfloor. So it's clean, we'll take it out, hopefully it fits well. And then the idea is that we won't actually glue and secure this yet. We just want to use it to put weight on top of this when we glue the other stuff down. Alright, so the subfloor is in. We just had to do a couple cuts on that last piece at the end, and we are good to go. So the last thing we need to do before we actually glue down the pieces underneath and the insulation is the old chalk line and that's just to mark out where our furring strips are underneath. Katie is labeling the insulation now because we're about to take all this out and then we'll tip the wood up, we'll clean out underneath and then we'll glue, put the wood down and then glue, put the insulation in. And we use Sika 221 as an adhesive between the wood skeleton framing and the metal of the van. For the foam board adhesive we use PL300 and then we just put the, uh, the template down from our subfloor on top. We did not glue it or screw it down yet. We're just using it as a weight. Um, we want to wait till the glue beneath dries before we screw into it. So put some tires, some heavy boxes on top to hopefully get maximal adhesion. Let's go, Jim. I just keep bugging you. You're just dragging your feet. <laughs> this one is procrastinating today. Where are you going now, bud? Give you one of these. Ow, ow. Okay, Andy, let's go. Let's go get stuff done. Had to run to Rona this morning and get some more PL300. I might have gone a little bit overkill uh, attaching the foam to the metal of the van, but it's solid. The princess is here. Subfloor adhesive for the wood to wood connections, and then that PL300 foam board adhesive to go from the wood to the foam board. And then screw it all in, and we're pretty much done on the floor. Until our 12 volt heating pads arrive, then we can install those, and then we can do our sheet vinyl flooring on top of that. So, we're using the Great Stuff Gaps and Cracks spray foam for just anywhere that we can fit it on the edge of the insulation or really those big spots like over in the corner and we'll just work our way around the van um, and then also anywhere that it joins to the edge of the van itself instructions shake vigorously minimum 60 seconds it's great liquid you can do some gear all of your muscles don't <laughs> I'm glad I held you back. Look at this is absolutely exploding out of the crack. Tim would rather overfill and then trim off the excess 
Okay, he wants it to be just right. I think in the end, it honestly doesn't really matter. As long as you get the spray foam between the wood and the edge of the van like that, then you're, you're good. We took a quick lunch break, but now that the spray foam is all dry, we can cut it up and then lay our plywood on top. The key is to have a really long blade, get it really low, and then do a little saw-like motion like this. I bet lunch is too good. Ah, that's where I wow. got my throw up. Who, who sprayed that part? You did. What an absolute waste of foam. Tim's like, oh, I need to build it up all the way, Katie. Don't tell me to stop. Here I am, cutting it away. Oh, it's not even dry in the middle because it's so wet. This is looking clean. So we brought the plywood back in the van, and now Katie is starting to use the PL300 on the foam board, and then we'll swap it out for this construction subfloor adhesive. And then we'll put, lay the sheet of plywood back down, try not to smear it, and screw it in. The key um, that we've read online that we've learned is to try not to do lines everywhere, but trying to do try to do like little circle dabs, um, so that it has a little bit to compress into. inch and a half screws to screw the plywood into the furring strips below and that will vary depending on how thick your plywood is and how thick your furring strips are but for us we use three quarter inch exterior grade plywood and one inch furring strips beneath it so inch and a half screws are perfect for us and now Katie has taken over <laughs> forcefully. <laughs> forcefully taken over the spray foaming unfortunately for me and she is doing a great job. So that's it guys, all done the floor. Obviously we've done a little bit more. You can see some windows and some wall furring strips up, but we forgot to film this uh, exit part. So hope you enjoyed the video. We hope you found it helpful. And if you did, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.